welcome to Life Springs Online. We're so happy you chose to worship with us today. If you could please help us by sharing this broadcast. And also, don't forget to like and subscribe on all of our social media platforms. Before we get into the service today, let's talk about the different service options here at Life Springs Church. Let's start with the San Lee campus. We have two services on Thursday nights at 6.30 and 7.30 p.m and also Sunday mornings at 9, 10, and 11 a.m. Life Springs Youth is happening every Wednesday at 7 p.m. in the Youth Building. And finally, the Western Harnett Campus meets every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. at Western Harnett High School. 2020 was a crazy year, and for many of us, it caused us to be isolated. Pastor Dale has been saying since the pandemic that we can't create habits to isolate ourselves, and there's no better way to fight isolation than joining a small group. Small groups are a chance for us to get together, even in the middle of COVID. We have groups that meet in person and online, so you can be sure to find one that suits you. One of the special groups we're doing this semester is Freedom Group. This group is an opportunity for you to break free of the things that hold you back and seek God to find your purpose. You can sign up today for any of our small groups after service, and you can also sign up by heading over to our website. Our next baptisms will be on January 28th and 31st at the San Lee campus. So if baptism is your next step, sign up today in person or online. Here at Life Springs, we care about our kids. We have some amazing resources for them to have church at home. Go ahead and get your kids ready by heading over to lifesprings.online. There you will find teaching videos and also some things you can do with them. If you haven't done so already, make sure you share this broadcast. The more you share, the more people have the chance to hear about God's love. And now here's Pastor Shane with some info on giving. Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in today. Hey, we're going to worship God by giving. But if it's your first time tuning in with us today, do not give. We didn't invite you here to take your money. We wanted you to hear the greatest story that's ever been told. Church family, we encourage you to give because the Bible tells us it is better to give than to receive, right? So right now, what I'd like to do is pray with you. Father, we praise you and we thank you for the opportunity to give. And for those uh, who do give and those who have given, they, they really do understand that it is more blessed to give than to receive. I pray, Father, that uh, you know, we, would, we would do this and we would do this with a, a grateful heart. And God, I pray blessings over those who have to give and those that don't. And Father, give us opportunities to, to you know, build your kingdom, whether it be here in Lee County or beyond. And we'll give you the glory, and we'll give you the honor, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, if you want to know more about giving, you can go to lifesprings.online and find all that information there. Thanks, and take care. Well, guys, we've got a great service in store for you today. If you make any commitments to God, let us know by texting this number below. You can text Jesus, prayer, or LSC.
Some of you will, but I found myself just walking around my house yesterday with my hands raised, singing, through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend on Jesus. I've learned to depend on God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to stand upon his word. Could you say amen to that? Is anybody here 
We're thinking about hindsight 2020. We're thinking about where we've been. And there's a lot of things we've learned, but through it all, come on. Through it all. Say through it all. God's been faithful. He's been faithful, and you can depend on Him when everything else is going down. Father, help us to never lose sight of that, but keep our eyes pointed to you the whole time. Let us learn that you say in the end of your great Sermon on the Mount, that the builder that built on the sand, his house collapsed, but the one that built on the rock, the rock of your word, it will last. It will last through anything going on in the economy, anything that's going on in our politics, anything going on in your family, anything going on in your job, anything going on with you. The word of God is stable. We build upon that truth. And God, we know we can. For the person here who don't know you, let them say, Lord, I know you've been faithful, and I'm sorry for my sins. I commit my life to you. Hey, I'm going to ask... Um, everybody except for the business owners that came for a blessing I want everybody else to sit down but the business owners that came for a blessing would you please remain standing if you don't mind if you have a business a small business a large business or if you're a manager and a leader of people we got a few right here in this place and I'm gonna um, if you would like to be anointed if you don't that's fine but if you'd like for somebody you're not you know I understand it's COVID but if you would like for somebody to put oil on you to symbolize the Holy Spirit just raise your hand right now and keep it up until somebody comes and uh, will come and just do that and then you can place your hand down and I tell you we do this every year and I don't think there's ever been a year we do this more in fact I would encourage you if you're in this place today and you know anybody I invite them you know the number one difference between a, a live church and a dying church a growing church and a dying church is invite and people will come to church if you invite them and, and, and there's a lot of people starting businesses and right now this is a tough time to start a business a small business I'm reminded of Zechariah. He said, the Bible says in Zechariah, it says, despise not the day of small beginnings. The Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Can I hear an amen right now? We're believing the Lord's going to see a work begin. And I just want to speak a word over you today. And as I, as I pray a blessing over you and your business, I want to speak this word from, from Proverbs 21, verse 5. It says, good planning and hard work lead to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. Come on, am I making sense to you? Let me say it again. Good planning and hard work leads to prosperity. But hasty shortcuts leads to poverty. Come on, I want you to lift your hands up like you're receiving a blessing. I want you, to, if you're sitting here, to stretch your arm this way to those. Lord, our economy, our nation was built off of entrepreneurs and people who would step out of their comfort zone. And some of the people I'm looking at right here, I, I remember when they stepped out in faith. And I remember uh, what happened. And I've seen some of them be blessed and immeasurably in their business. And some of them, I, I, I know, are just getting started and, and, and needing this to be a year. And what a tough time to really start. And some, some businesses in 2020 actually flourished. Some really suffered, and it depended upon the business and the regulations and the laws and the demand and the, so many things that were working for or against us in 2020. But here's what I know. I know that the plans of a righteous person will prevail if they've given it to you. I believe the prayers of a righteous person will prevail. I believe that we can commit our ways to the Lord and our plans will be established. I believe that good planning and hard work will lead to prosperity. And I'm praying that the people that are standing here today and saying, Lord, we bless, bless me, they recognize it's not just up to them but they need the hand of God and I speak favor over them and their business I speak favor over their family I speak favor over their finances I speak favor and favor ain't fair I speak favor in the name of Jesus that they would have doors open that they don't even know how it opened and that they would have opportunities that others wouldn't have I speak favor I speak the face of God to shine upon them and their business Turn your face to them. Turn your will to them. And let this be the year of record. Let this be the year they never even dreamed was possible. And I pray, God, that they would not use this business just to glorify themselves and expand their kingdom, but it would be used for you and your kingdom. And I challenge you right here as you receive that blessing that you would make a commitment back to God and say, God, if you'll bless me, I'll make sure to keep you first. I'll, if you'll bless me, I want you to be first in everything I do. And Father, I know, I know that you will. I've seen you do it in my life. I've seen you do it in this church's life. I've seen you do it in a countless businesses' life. I know you will because when order is restored, blessings are released. Where order is restored, blessings are released. And we establish that right now in the name of Jesus. And everybody that receives it said, amen and amen and amen. Come on, let's give you my hand clap of praise right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.
Amen. 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 I am so, amen. I'm believing it. Can I hear an amen? Amen. That it's not just music and it's not just, it's not just emotion, but I believe there's a power in the blessing. In fact, I want you to do something for me. I want you to search right now for those of you that want a blessing. Search right now. Go to BibleGateway.com or version or wherever, a Bible version. And I want you to search how many times face shine upon you. And just see how many times that speaks. There's something about when God's face, because why? He's looking at you and he's paying attention to you. How many of you want some of that right now in your, in your life, either business owner or not? Let, the, let his face shine upon you. That's my prayer for you. And I'm, I'm believing God for it. I want to say hello to everybody in this auditorium. You're a good-looking bunch of people, or at least most of you are. The rest of you is going to catch up. I know you will. I want to say hello to those in the lounge and those in the party room. I want to say to those that are watching online from literally around the world, come on, say hello to your church family no matter where they're tuning in from. Get loud. So glad you're here. Thank you for being a part of it. And hey, if you make any commitments to Jesus Christ or you need anything, the way to do that is texting this number. Would you say this number aloud with me? One, two, three. Nine, one, nine. 586 8900. I want you to put that in your phone. I want to let's talk. I want to let's do things. And, and we're having like a hundred of you that's texting us on the weekends. And we're so excited about that. And so here's some of the things you can text. Like you can just, if, if you want, if you made a commitment to Jesus, text Jesus and we'll help you know what your next step is. And if you want more information on LSC, text LSC. If you want prayer, how many of you like to know somebody's praying for you? Hold your hands up. If you will text this number and there's a prayer card that'll be sent to you, you fill it out, somebody's going to be praying for you. We get that. I, I, I'm serious. We take it seriously. Seriously, we're a church that believes prayer is a serious matter. Let my house be called a house of prayer. Can I hear an amen? amen. And so I want to pray for you. If you want the sermon notes, and I really want you to get the sermon notes because I'm excited about this today. Just text sermon and we'll send you back a link to that. Um, all kinds of things. One of the things we're doing right now, you can keep texting this number. Uh, same things. If you want to, we're, we're in a fast. Now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand because it's somewhat private, uh, but, but we've been fasting, a lot of us, and a buddy of mine sent me a, a picture, and he, he very well meaning, he sent me a picture yesterday, he said, did you know that little Debbie is now making cereal? And sent me a picture of it, that's for real, on the shelf. I replied back, get behind me, Satan, you know, right, because, come on, we're fasting, can I hear an amen right here? But, but if you want to know about fasting, you want to learn, just text learn and we'll teach you about it. And if you want to be in the fast with your church family, and how many of you are doing the Bible study? Let me hear an amen if you've been doing it. My, my, over a hundred of you have signed up for it. And my, I'm telling you, it's, it's getting better and better. And I'm already ahead of you. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping up with the family, but I'm also a little bit ahead of you. So I know where we're going. I tell you, I have really been blessed by this Bible study. You can text fast and join in with us. Do not get left behind in this thing. How many of you are believing God for some big things in 2021 can I you know and I hadn't even thought of this to right now we're fasting 21 days in the year 21 isn't that great that's how awesome. we're fasting 21 days and so I'm excited we're fasting for a lot of things and we're sending out like every day if you text fast and we'll, we'll send you things we're praying for as a church family I think today we're praying for our youth and the youth need a prayer today can I right and and so we're praying and thinking about that think of that hundreds of people praying today for young people that's an incredible thing I, I want to give you one that we're probably not going to text out or whatever but your church family can I hear it right and if you're visiting with this then you could sit back relax this is not really for you but but I want to talk to the church family for just a second about something that I'm fasting for this year and and so I'm going to do real quick I want to just talk to you for just a second um um, actually, this is the title of the sermon, but I'll come back to that in just a few minutes. Um, I want to tell you about this thing called grow. Who's ever heard us talk about grow? Hold your hands up good and high. Grow. And, and it's this whole idea um, of how we fund the vision of our church. Now, um, the way we fund the vision of our church is we don't do barbecue sales, we don't do fundraisers, we don't do anything like that. We believe God wants the vision of this church to be funded in tithes and offering. And so what we do is we set a goal, and I stand on this stage, and we just you know, ask the congregation to give tithes and offering, and we say, this is where we're going, and, and if you believe in that, give to it, and if not, then if, if you guys finally get to a place that we say, you know what, this church don't no longer exist, then we'll shut the doors and go home, but I don't think God's done with us yet, can I hear an amen on that, right? And so we're continuing to go forward, and we set goals, and the current goal, for those that haven't been around, is we're preparing to build at this campus, and, um, and, and we're excited, but we've been planning this for years, literally, like two or three years now we've been planning that and if you hadn't seen where it's going to go where it's going to go if this is the blue square is right where the the um the youth building is now where you check your kids in down here we're going to come right so this is the this is the road right to the right of that i'll build a sanctuary that'll seat five or six hundred and then have a lobby that would tie them together and that's what we're working on and we've been saving for and we've been believing for and can i just tell you that um 
I love you. This has been an incredible year. Even in a pandemic, this church had a record high given of any year in our history. We increased between 6 and 7% over 2019. Can we thank God for that for just a second? But I, I felt like you were going to clap, but let me just give you some more, okay? We just spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to grade this and to put, I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars. We did it debt-free. Listen to me. Don't clap yet. We did it debt-free. We still gave away, as a church, gave away over $150,000, and we saved 24% of what came in. We should praise God. I don't even know, I don't even know how that happens, but God. This is a God move. This is what, what, what we're experiencing here at Life Spring Church, in my opinion. Let me hear an amen if you believe. This is a move of God. I believe that with all my heart, and I think there's nothing in my life to suggest otherwise. And so one of the things I'm fasting for and I'm praying that this is going to be our year. I would love to do Christmas Eve services in our new building. I would love to do Easter, but nevertheless, I'd love it anytime sooner. Come on, right? I would love to do that. And I'm going to ask you, as you fast, to fast and pray with me that this is our year. Can I hear an amen, amen. on that? That this is our year. This is our year to build that building. Now, if you've not been a part of it, how can you participate? Here's how you can participate. Number one, become a tither. The Bible says bring the whole tithe. That means tenth. The word tithe means tenth into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room to store it. And let me just tell you, I have tested him, and he is faithful. My wife and I gave away more money than we ever gave away in our life last year. And I'm telling you, we, we did it now. We had unexpected money that came to us that's almost exactly, if not exceeds, the amount we gave away. Tell me God's not faithful. Can I hear an amen? He is faithful to the very end. You cannot outgive God, and I dare you to spend the rest of your life trying to prove me a liar on that. You can, can I hear an amen? You can't outgive God. Can I hear that? So, so you can become a tither. It takes a lot of faith, um, and I don't know anything that would, but, but it teaches you not to trust anybody else but God. The second way, if you're already a tither, then begin to give with an increase. My wife's been doing that. My wife and I have been doing that for years since we were married. Every year we try to up our giving over last year, and every year we pray about it, and our eyes get big, and we don't know if we can do it, but here's the truth. Ready? Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. You, in a large way, have control over the blessings that's coming back to you. You ever thought about that? You decide. In a lot of, in a lot of ways, you have, you, have a, you have your hand on that. You have input in that. By the measure of your faith, say faith. faith. So here's what I'm, I'm, listen, you determine how fast this church gets to the goal that we have. And all I've ever asked you to do, and I've never, I've never stood up here and made a big deal about money, and I'm not going to make a big deal about money now. I've never been like, come on, dig deep. The only thing I'm going to ask you to do is ask God what you should do and then obey him. Amen. How many of you would do that? Hold your hands up good and high. If you want to know more about ways to give, go to lifesprings.online, and there's all kinds of stuff there on how to give. Now, today what I want to do is I want to get in. My title of my sermon slide is a little bit out of place here. I meant to change it, and I've, I didn't change it everywhere. But um, the title of the sermon slide, so you don't have it to cheat with, is called what this week? It's called what? The title of the sermon series is what? One, two, three. Hindsight 2020. And today what I want to talk to you about is live again. Say live again. Live again. Here we go. Ready? This has been a verse that we've been looking at every week of this series. And we know that God calls us what? Come on, a little louder. He calls us what? And what does everything include in the Greek? Everything, everything to work together for the good. Does that say that everything that happens to you is going to be good? But it says he's going to what? Work it for the good. For those who love the Lord, anybody in here love God? Let me see you right here. Anybody in here who is called according to his purpose for them? In other words, you're willing to say, Lord, not my will, but thine will in my life. Anybody here? Hold, hold it up good and high if that's where you say, I want to be under the will of God. Then this is a promise. Say promise. A promise from God, and, not a, and God is not a man who, who should have to lie. And he says, you, listen, you, no matter what you go through, it might not be good, but I'm going to take the bad and make it into good. Has anybody, I have so many times in my life, looked back over my life and almost everything that's happened. Some of them I'm going to probably have to wait till I get to heaven to see all the good out of it. That Some of the things were not good. But I've seen a lot of good from the bad in my life as I've lived. Anybody here, can y'all raise your hand and say the same? You've seen a lot of good come from the bad in your life no matter where it was. Absolutely you can. 
Now today what I want to talk to you is for those of you right now who are in a time in your life where it's not so good. I want to talk to some of you right now who feel like in 2020 you kind of lost a little bit. You lost some of that life. Um, I did. I'll be honest with you. Uh, in fact, let me just give you a word in case you don't know this. Almost every pastor I know is strugg has struggled with depression in 2020. Still are. Uh, I, the pastors I know, in fact, a lot of them are, are thinking about going back to you know, you remember whenever Jesus uh, had called his disciples and he called them off the boat and they were, uh, they were following him around and then Jesus went to the cross and then he went, died and then before he, re he, resur he resurrected, but before he showed himself to the um, disciples and had come and, and all this kind of stuff, you remember Peter had gone back fishing. You remember that, right? Because he thought he'd, he just failed and there was no redemption and, 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 he, and Jesus had to call him and call him off the boat for a second time. I know a lot of pastors that are having to get called off the boat a second time. I think there's some of you, though, I just say pastors because that's the circle I run in. I think some of you right now have gone back to fishing. You've gone back to that old life. You've gone back to that old way because 2020 took something out of you. I think some of you watching online, it's all you can do to watch online. You're barely hanging on spiritually by a thread. And you long to get together with people, but you feel like you can't because of COVID and whatever. And uh, I, I, I believe there's a lot of you right now who may be watching online that you had not been in church in years. You've been spirit, you used to be walking with the Lord when you were a teenager, but now you're in your 30s and you've kind of backslid and, and you feel like life, not just 2020, but life has taken something out of you. I want you to know something. You can live again. You can live again. Here's our Life Spring Church social media moment right here. It's from Ezekiel, which is the passage I'm going to be preaching on, Ezekiel 37, but I just love this passage. It says, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, say look, look. with an explanation point. I am going to put breath into you and make you what? One, two, three. Live again. 2020 um, has has taken some life and some energy and some of you spiritually you're dead but here's what I want you to know is that we serve a God of resurrections we serve a God that brings life we serve a God that died in three days but resurrected in three days I mean died and then resurrected in three days we serve a God who calls Lazarus out of tomb we serve a God who brings to life dead things now he wants to revive you you know what revive means, right? If you don't, let me just give you a definition. Revive means to restore to life or consciousness. Restore to life because you know why? You say, well, I'm not really dead. I, I, I got a pulse right here. I just don't feel anything on the inside. Anybody know what it feels like to be dead on the inside? Can I see any hand other than my own right here? Anybody ever felt numb on the inside, no fire? You know why that happens? Because the devil is seeking to whom he may destroy. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He's trying to tear you up. He tries to snuff your life out like you would snuff out a cigarette butt he wants to make you like the cigarette butt under his feet but Jesus says I have come that you might have life and have it to the full revive means to restore back to life and I'm praying for some of you right now that there's going to be a resurrection from you you've dead spiritually you have backslid but he's come that you will live again but I like this other definition because it also says to revive means to restore to consciousness see sometimes we just we ain't dead, we just sleeping at the wheel. Anybody knows what that feels like? We ain't dead, we just been in a fight and you got knocked out. You got the breath knocked out of you. And now you need the Holy Spirit of God to come up beside of you and shake you a little bit. And say it's time to wake up because it's a new day. I'm believing that 2021 is going to be your year where you woke up. And it's a consciousness. Today what I want to do is I want to read a passage and I want to give you a visual of what it looks like of what I'm praying over you. You, you, you. I'm praying over your family. I'm praying this over our church. And I'm praying this over America. And let me give you the context of the passage we're going to look at. This is a, it's, it's the, commonly known as the Valley of Dry Bones. Assyria had scattered Israel and had the Babylonians had now captured Judah and the vision that Ezekiel's having is that he goes to this valley literally what it literally means is a battlefield so it's a place where a battle was fought 2020 might have been a battlefield for you a place where a spiritual battle was fought he went to this battlefield in this valley and he sees dry say dry 
bones. That means these are bones that have been whitewashed. They had been dead. It means utter defeat. There was no life there. And he gives him, Ezekiel, a prophecy. And he says the prophecy is that there's going to be a new work. That right now, this is a dead nation, the nation of Israel. But they will live again. Say live again. Now this prophecy was specifically for Israel, which we saw come to life in 1948, for those that know the history. Now, I want to be very careful. This, this prophecy is not for every nation, and it's not for every church, and it's not for every... I, I, I don't want to take the Bible out of context, but here's what I do believe. I believe that we're saints of God, and we've been adopted into the family of God. Come on, can I hear an amen? And I believe Israel was the first family of God, and we got adopted, we got grafted in. I believe we can claim this as our word from the Lord. Amen. Come on, can, can anybody have enough faith to believe that right now? I believe we can claim this as a word from the Lord for us in 2021. Now, I don't have a lot of time because uh, I want to end this with a big, big time with you and God. And I'm not going to try to give a whole lot of commentary because I don't think it's needed. But I'm going to give you a little bit as I go. And I'm going to make three quick points and then we're going to worship some more. Who likes that? Hold your hands up good and high. So here we go. I'm going to just kind of talk you through it and let's just look at it. Here we go. Ready? In, in, in Ezekiel 37, we're going to read verses 1 through 14. I'm going to be reading the New Living Translation. It says, The Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by what? The Spirit of the Lord to the valley filled with bones. Now, I want you just to note as we go through this. The Holy Spirit, all the way through the Scriptures, is the resurrection agent of God. You need the Holy Spirit in your life. You need the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. You need to be seeking the Holy Spirit during this fast. You need to be letting the Holy Spirit, because you know why? The Bible says that the same resurrection that raised Jesus from the dead, that same Spirit now lives in you. You need to understand the Holy Spirit is the active agent. If you're going to go from dead to life, you're going to have to open your heart up, open your soul up, open your spirit up, and say, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Are y'all tracking? Can I hear an amen right here if you got it? All right, so now he, 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 say, he, he says, he led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. Now, now he, he's going all around. He says, they were scattered where? Everywhere, across the ground, and were completely dried out. Now, I want you to know, it's scattered where? Everywhere. So this is a person, when he goes there, this is Ezekiel's there, and he's surrounded by death. Everywhere you go, you may feel like you're surrounded by spiritual death. You've got every, your parents are dead spiritually, your co-workers are dead spiritually, your neighbors are dead spiritually, that it seems like there's no fire of God left anywhere. It seems like the whole nation, it seems like the whole neighborhood, it seems like the whole place, it seems like the whole high school is going to hell in a handbasket. It is spiritual death everywhere. And it's not just dried, it is completely, say completely, completely dried up. That means that these bones, if you know anything about aging corpse, that these bones have been dead for a while. And some of you right now, there's been no spiritual life in your family for years. It's been dead for a while. Then he asked me, son of man, can these bones become living people again? O sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. Come on, say it with me. Dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. Come on, say it with a little preacher voice. One, two, three. Dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. I want to just say to you right now, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. Because the word of the Lord has life in it. The word of the Lord has power in it. The, Lord of the, Lord, the word of the Lord speaks and life into existence. I love this U verse and study we've been doing as it talks about the power of God's word. When he breathes, it goes over his vocal cords and he speaks and says, let there be life. And all of a sudden from nothing comes something. And in six days, he creates the world and everything in it, the plants and the animals, all the living beings and the human mankind, all of the man and the woman. Because because why? It comes from the Word of the Lord. The Word of the Lord. You need to read the Word of the Lord in your family. You need to read the Word of the Lord every day over yourself. You need to memorize His Word because His Word brings life. Dry bones, listen to the Word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Look, I'm going to put breath in you and make you what? 
live again. The breath of God, the word of the Lord comes into those lungs of faith that you've got. And he breathes and resuscitates them. And he comes in and he says, I will put flesh and muscle on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Can I hear an amen right here? So I spoke this message just as he told me. Suddenly, I was, as I spoke, there was a rattling noise. All across the valley. You see, he began to hear a noise before he began to see it happen. I want you to know right now in my spirit, I'm hearing a rattling noise. I'm hearing families rattling. I'm hearing marriages rattling. I'm hearing businesses. I'm preaching better than y'all amen in me right now. I'm hearing a rattling noise that that this nation's going to come back together and you're going to come back to life and your family's going to be healed and your health is going to be healed. I hear the voice of the Lord right now. I hear a rattling in this valley that we're going to live again. I hear a rattling in your finances. I hear a rattling in your calling. We're going to live again. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. Then as I watched, muscles and flesh form over the bones. Then skin formed to cover their bodies. But they still had no breath in them. You know what? They were shells. They were just, they had the appearance of life, but they didn't have life. They had an outward that looks good, but there was no life inside. I know a lot of people like that, but I ain't got time to preach it. Where they got the appearance of godliness, but denying the power thereof. They know how to say, Lord, Lord, but he says, depart from me, I didn't know you. They don't know what, they don't have the life inside. We don't want to look like that, can I hear an amen? We want to have life and life to the full. He said, he said, then skin formed to cover the bodies. I already read that part. Let's keep on going. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to the wind, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath from the four winds. Breathe into these dead bodies so they may, what? One, two, three, live again. I'm going to live again. Can I hear an amen? Say it with me. I'm going to live again right now. Come on, a little louder. I'm going to live again. Type it right now. I'm going to live again. Do you? We're going to, God, do it again. Breathe on us. Breathe into us. So, I spoke the message as he commanded me. And the breath came into their bodies. And they all, and they all came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army. Now, I know this is kind of scary for people. Just say, thank God he ain't going to do it at the graveyard. Let's thank God he's going to do it in the lot church. Amen? Metaphorically. But here's what I want you to realize is that there was a great army. See, that's what I believe the church can be again. Yes. Not just a high maintenance audience, but an army of God that's going into community and winning people to yes. Jesus. I believe that with all my heart. One of the things I love about this church is that we don't just, we're not just pew setters. We're, we're, we're people, we we're, we're believe in living again. Can I hear live again? We're going to live again. And here, here's what he says. He, it says, then he said to me, son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying, we have become old, dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. You ever been to a place where all hope was gone? Felt like there was no hope. Some of you right now, you're hopeless. All hope is gone. Therefore, prophesy to them and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Oh, my people, I will open your graves and exile and cause you to what? Rise again. You're going to rise again. Then I will bring you back to the land of Israel. He said, it goes on. He says, when this happens, oh, my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you and you will what? One, two, three, live again. Say it again. Ready? You will what? Live Live again and return home to your land. The vision will be accomplished. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken. And I have done what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. We're talking revival. Can I hear an amen right now? And they did. They did get back to their land. In 1948, Israel got back to their land. And how did it happen? Well, let me tell you how it happened. He says, I will put what? My spirit. Because the spirit of God, I will put my spirit not around you, not just at your workplace, not just in your business. I'm going to put my spirit where? In you. How many of you want the spirit of God in you right now? 
He's the one who brings revival. The Spirit of God, I want you to notice, He's the one who brings the revival into your family. And that's how you return home. That's how you live again. Come on, I'm already preaching. But I'm going to give you three things, and then we're going, to, we're going to wind this baby down right here. Let me tell you what you need the Holy Spirit, what I want Him to do for you and me. Here, he resuscitates your life. He gives your mouth the breath of God. The Holy Spirit is the breath of God, and He comes and breathes into you. The Holy Spirit has, takes you from surviving to thriving. He takes you from barely getting by to truly living. He takes you from black. Who remembers black and white TV? I'm old enough to remember. Anybody? He takes you from black and white to living in color. He takes you from typewriters. Who remembers taking typing? He takes you from typewriters to computers. He takes you from mopeds to Mercedes. Let me just get on the subject I want to talk about. He takes you from hot dogs to filet mignon in the name of Jesus. We're fasting right now. I just want to put that in there right now. You see, you don't even know what your life can be until you let the Holy Spirit of God take residence in you. Here we go. Ready? Come on. He renews your hope. He renews your hope. When all hope is gone, you ever been there where Israel's at? All hope is gone. God can cause you to rise again. Say rise again. When all hope is gone, the presence of the Holy Spirit changes everything. And I'm telling you, the very presence of the Holy Spirit guarantees you that no matter how dark it gets, He's right there with you. No matter how bad it gets, He's right there with you. No matter how dry you feel, He's right there with you. No matter how desperate you are, He's right there with you. Let me just tell you, the Holy Spirit will keep your hope alive. Great benefit of this. Don't let these guys distract you. They're coming up to get on instruments. They, I, they, they, we're going to sing. Come on, somebody, right? One of the great benefits of living the Spirit-filled life is the absence of hopelessness. You never have to be hopeless again. Can I hear an amen? Here we go. One more. Ready? You got time for one more? He restores your dreams. Israel's dream was to be back home. Get back in their land. They've been living in exile for years. And God says, you will live again. You will return home. Basically what he's saying, he's saying, you know that dream that I gave you? Don't you give up on it. You can live again. That dream that I gave you for that marriage, that when you stood at that altar, don't you give up on it. That dream I gave you whenever you were first entering into the, uh, your calling or your ministry or whatever, don't you give up on it. That dream I gave you when you started that business, don't you give up on it. That dream I gave you, let me just tell you, you can live again. There's too many Christians living in exile, cast away from the promises of God. God wants you to live like a citizen of heaven. And, not, and so you had not been living like a citizen of heaven. If you're not walking in victory, you're living in exile. If you don't have peace in your life, you're living in exile. If, you're not, if you don't have the joy of the Lord, you're living in exile. If you don't have the power of the Holy Spirit working through you, you're living in exile. Can I, can I hear an amen right now? God didn't create you to live in exile. He created, created you to live in the abundance of who He is. Would you let Him breathe on you? Come on, would you stand with me right now? Hindsight's 2020. Can I hear an amen, right? And if you're if you're looking in hindsight and you're looking back at your life and it seems dead and it seems totally wasted, and we're doing this evaluation, I want you to know God brought you here for me to tell you, you can live again. Anybody here? Anybody here want God to set some dry bones of life? Let me see your head right now. Anybody here want to see some resurrections in your own heart, in your own mind, in your own life, in your own family? Let me see your hand. Anybody here willing to say, Holy Spirit of God, I need you to come and resurrect me and take control. Father, for every hand raised right here, right now, use this for your glory. Use this service for your glory. Use this moment for your glory. God, right now, as we begin this song, right now, use this whole thing right now that y'all want you to look dead in the eye of everybody in this place and say live again come on say it with me live again come on say it with me live again God I want you to set somebody on fire right now Jesus died he resurrected I want you to think about what he did for you on Calvary I want you to think about when they laid him in the tomb and he come forward come on I want you to sing this to him right here that same resurrection power lives in us Saturday was silent, surely it was through. But since when has impossible ever stopped you? Think about these words. 
Friday's disappointment but he was Sunday's empty too Since right. when has impossible ever stopped you Your marriage is not impossible Your finances are not impossible Your business is not impossible is the sound That relationship with your child is not impossible Come on, I hear the sound right now Come on, sing this it This is the place make a dead man walk again Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live Come on, again. I'm gonna live again. Say it, I'm gonna live this again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Thank you guys for watching with us. We hope you heard from God today. 
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and text this number below if you made any commitments to God, need prayer, or if you'd like some more information about our church. We'll see you again next week.